We've been hearing for weeks that those of us who are in favor of Second Amendment rights are somehow weird, crazy, right? because we're all worried that they're going to take our guns. And what you'll hear from people on the left is, no, we don't want to take your guns. No, we're not interested in, in taking your guns. Why would we want to take your guns under any... No, no. And then, of course, they argue that they want to take our guns. The latest example of this comes courtesy of former Supreme Court Justice John Paul Stevens. So John Paul Stevens was appointed by Republicans, and then he proceeded to govern left of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. That is not a joke. If you actually look, people have charted how particular justices govern uh, and rule from the bench. John Paul Stevens is one of the most liberal members of the court for nearly his entire tenure. He was one of the worst picks. I believe he was appointed by President Reagan, one of the worst picks of President Reagan. Uh, and he has just been disastrous. In fact, you know, I'm going to check that real fact, that he, that he was appointed by, he might have been appointed by Nixon. Um, yeah, he was appointed by, by President Nixon. Oh, sorry, Gerald Ford. <laughs> he was appointed by Gerald Ford. But he was one of Gerald Ford's worst moves. And now he has an op-ed in the New York Times literally titled Repeal the Second Amendment which makes the second top ed in the New York Times in the last two years calling for a full repeal of the Second Amendment after Brett Stevens wrote the same thing, and Brett is their in-house conservative over there. So John Paul Stevens writes this full op-ed about why we should get rid of the Second Amendment entirely. First of all, completely unrealistic. In order to pass a constitutional amendment, you require two-thirds approval of each House of Congress plus three-quarters of all state legislatures. Look at a map. It's all red. Okay, there are 30-some go governors in the United States who are Republican. Zero state legislatures are actually going to pass this thing outside of California, Massachusetts, New York, uh, and maybe, you know, Minnesota or something. And then the notion that a bunch of people are sitting around waiting to repeal the Second Amendment is just not accurate. But let's go through John Paul Stevens' awful argument in the New York Times for why the Second Amendment should be repealed. So he begins by praising the marches and rallies that have been taking place since the Parkland shooting. He writes this. Rarely in my lifetime have I seen the type of civic engagement school children and their supporters demonstrated in Washington and other major cities throughout the country this past Saturday. These demonstrations demand our respect. They reveal the broad public support for legislation to minimize the risk of mass killings of school children and others in our society. So number one, this is stupid. This is incredibly stupid. And the, the, if you really believe that big rallies mean that there's tremendous support for hardcore anti-gun legislation, then you've never seen a rally before. And first of all, this rally wasn't that big. There were like 200,000 people who showed up in D.C., Sizable rally? Sure. Okay, in 2000, there's the Million Mom March, also for gun control, also anti-NRA, and three quarters of a million people showed up in Washington, D.C. At that point, I believe Bill Clinton was still president, technically, and nothing happened. Right? Zero things happened. There was, and there's been serious, seriously, pretty much zero gun legislation between 2000 and 2018, despite multiple major rallies on gun control. And it's worth noting, that when Tea Partiers were out there by the hundreds of thousands, nobody seemed to care about that either. Every year, the March for Life happens. It's several hundred thousand people, and pro-life legislation does not inevitably follow, nor would people on the left suggest, wow, look at the public support for that. That means we suddenly have to get rid of abortion rights. So this is really dumb. And then he continues. He says, the marches are a sign that it's time to seriously curb weapons ownership. Quote, that support is a clear sign to lawmakers to enact legislation prohibiting civilian ownership of semi-automatic weapons, increasing the minimum age to buy a gun from 18 to 21, and establishing more comprehensive background checks on all purchasers of firearms. But the demonstrators should seek more effective and more lasting reform. They should demand a repeal of the Second Amendment. So it's not enough to pass a law that would bar civilian ownership of semi-automatic weapons, which is to say virtually every weapon in the United States. Again, for those who don't know anything about guns, a semi-automatic weapon just means you pull the trigger once and one bullet fires and another one is loaded into the chamber. That is all a semi-automatic weapon is. That's the only thing that distinguishes between a revolver and a semi-automatic weapon is that there is a, is there is a changing cylinder in a revolver that doesn't exist in a semi-automatic weapon. Virtually every weapon in the United States, unless it is bolt loading, muzzle loading, or a revolver, is a semi-automatic weapon. Virtually all of them. And there are 300 million of them in the United States. So he says, well, no problem. Just get rid of semi-automatic weapons. Everything will be fine. <laughs> Yeah, good luck with that one. Okay, but then he says that he wants the Second Amendment gone. So it's not enough to just get rid of And then I love this, that the left keeps saying that we're just idly worried about Second Amendment rights being violated. We're not. We, we can have common sense gun regulations. Yeah, at least Stevens is being honest. At least he's being honest. So he says, let's get rid of the Second Amendment entirely. He says, quote, Concern that a national standing army might pose a threat to the security of the separate states led to the adoption of that amendment, which provides the, quote, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Today, that concern is a relic of the 18th century. Well, um, no. No, it, it isn't. Okay, the concern that the federal government would invade our rights in a really egregious manner and that we might need guns to protect ourselves, 
I'm wondering how that's a relic of the 18th century when we have had, beyond the 18th century, full-on slavery in the United States, Jim Crow, removal of gun rights from black folks, removal of gun rights from, from a wide variety of people, including Japanese Americans during World War II, and the forcible imprisonment of Japanese during World War II. It seems to me that an armed population is a, is a better guarantee than sitting around thinking that the government will never go tyrannical. It just, it just is. That's not to suggest that every armed rebellion is good or that it will end well or that armed rebellions are largely successful. But one of the reasons that the government doesn't go full tyrannical is because they know that there are 100 million people in the United States who own guns. Try telling a bunch of Texans they're not violating their rights when you say you want to go into their basement and take out all of their guns. Again, good luck with that. This is not, a, this concern is, it, you know how historically ignorant you have to be to believe that it's a relic of the 18th century to worry about centralized government taking your guns and then invading your rights? Okay, it's happened in virtually every tyrannical country. It's happened in China. It has happened in the Soviet Union. It's happened in Nazi Germany. This sort of stuff happens all the time, routinely, a lot. And so then he continues, says, for over 200 years after the adoption of the Second Amendment, it was uniformly understood as not placing any limit on either federal or state authority to enact gun control legislation. In 1939, the Supreme Court unanimously held that Congress could prohibit the possession of a sawed-off shotgun because that weapon had no reasonable relation to the preservation or efficiency of a quote-unquote well-regulated militia. Well, that's not even a real reading of the case. That's a bad reading of the case. If the idea here is that you have to be a member of the militia in order to carry a gun, that is absolutely untrue. It is not true at the time of the founding. It is not true throughout American history. It's not even true in the case that Stevens is citing. Stevens was a bad Supreme Court justice, and he is an ignoramus when it comes to actual jurisprudence. Okay, the case he's citing is United States versus Miller in 1939. Justice Scalia explained this case to Stevens in his opinion in DC versus in Heller versus DC. He said, quote, Miller did not hold that and cannot be possibly read to have held that. Quote, the judgment in the case upheld against a Second Amendment challenge two men's federal convictions for transporting an unregistered short-barreled shotgun in interstate commerce in violation of the National Firearms Act. It is entirely clear that the court's basis for saying the Second Amendment did not apply was not that the defendants were bearing arms, not for military purposes. Rather, it was the type of weapon at issue was not eligible for the Second Amendment protection. This holding is, is not only consistent with, but positively suggests that the Second Amendment confers an individual right to keep and bear arms, though only arms that have some reasonable relationship to the preservation or efficiency of a well-regulated well militia. Had the court believed that the Second Amendment protects only those serving in the militia, it would have been odd to examine the character of the weapon rather than simply note that the true two crooks were not militiamen. Furthermore, this has been understood for literally hundreds of years. One of the reasons in the Dred Scott decision, the evil, horrible Dred Scott decision, in which the Supreme Court decided that black people in America could not be full citizens of the United States, okay, Justice Taney wrote in that decision that one of the reasons black people could not be citizens of the United States is that if you made them citizens of the United States, then they'd be able to carry guns. The obvious underlying assumption being that citizens of the United States have the ability to carry guns, that they have the right to carry guns under the Constitution of the United States. And right, here's what Justice Taney wrote in that evil Dred Scott decision, quote, it would give to persons of the Negro race who are recognized as citizens in any one state of the union the right to enter every other state whenever they please. It would give them full liberty of speech in public and in private upon all subjects upon which citizens might speak, to hold public meetings upon political affairs, and to keep and carry arms wherever they went. And this scared Justice Tawney. This is why he said that we wouldn't allow black people to be citizens and that they had to remain sort of property in this evil decision, he said, because if you were to make them citizens, then there are rights that come along with being a citizen. One of those rights is carrying firearms. But Stevens isn't done. Then he quotes Chief Justice Warren Burger, who's the man responsible for such constitutional abominations as Roe versus Wade. And he says that Chief Warren Burger used to say that the NRA was stupid. Well, who cares what Chief Warren Burger had to say? That guy was a terrible justice. Warren Burger was such a bad justice that Potter Stewart, another justice on the Supreme Court, leaked dramatically to Woodward and Bernstein. I think it was Carl Woodward. Uh, uh, was it Bernstein or Woodward? It was to one of them uh, in their book, The Brethren. Okay, The Brethren is a book about the inside workings of the Supreme Court. Potter Stewart hated Warren Burger so much that he leaked the entire book, okay, to, to Woodward and Bernstein about why Warren Burger was an idiot. Everybody on the court thought Warren Burger was an idiot, except for John Paul Stevens, apparently. Okay, so in any case, he then rips into District of Columbia versus Heller, that's DC versus Heller, the 2008 case that re enshrined the American right to keep and, bear, keep and bear arms. And here is what Stevens concludes. He says, that decision, which I remain convinced was wrong and certainly was debatable, has provided the NRA with a propaganda weapon of immense power. Well, actually, they had a Second Amendment before that. Overturning that decision via a constitutional amendment to get rid of the Second Amendment would be simple. It would do more to weaken the NRA's ability to stymie legislative debate and block constructive gun control legislation than any other available option. Okay, so it would be easy to get rid of the Second Amendment. 
go ahead and try. Leftists, please do it. Make this your rallying cry. Please tell Republicans all over the country they're going to take away their weapons and repeal the Second Amendment. Do it. I dare you. You want to see yourselves get killed in November, politically speaking? You want to see get, just get destroyed politically speaking? Do this. Push for a giant gun control effort. Okay. Okay. <laughs>